We're watching Jessica Butner attempting the squat in the 2019 IPF Powerlifting Championship. Great form. Oh, no injury there. Nicely done. There's a happy athlete. Muscle names, often in Latin, because we want an international language that we can all commun communicate with. The names are often based on shape, location, fibers, or other factors. So let's dive in. Location. Brachy means arm. So you see the prefix brachii, bicep two heads. And there we have it, bicep brachii. How about the brachioradialis? That's a long word, but it makes sense. Brachy means arm. Radialis refers to the radius uh, the forearm, so brachy o radialis. Yeah, makes sense. How about fibers? If we see a cutaway of the abs, we see there's a transversus. Muscle goes across, such as the transversus abdominis. We see a slanting muscle, the external oblique. As oblique means slanting. And rectus means straight. And so here is the, what we often think of as an ab, sort of the six-pack, rectus abdominis. Shape, vastus, it helps to know some keywords like vastus, large, femur, thigh. Vastus lateralis is the big thigh muscle to the outside. Medialis is the thigh muscle to the inside. And rectus, we just saw that word, straight down the middle. Gastro is the gastroc, think of belly, calf muscle. Soleus underneath the gastroc. Now how about actions? A lot of words here, but let's make sense out of it. Prime movers do the main action, and they are also called agonists. They fight against the antagonists, such as the bicep brachii. Two heads on that muscle. It's going to flex and bring the hand up towards the shoulder, but it its antagonist is the tricep brachii, three heads on that muscle. That's going to be an extensor. Now, if we want to extend our arm, then the tricep is the agonist, the prime mover, and the antagonist is the bicep. So they can switch off. Synergis, that's when a muscle gets help, such as the pectoralis. It's going to bring the arms down and towards the midline. That's called uh, adduction. There's the word adduct. And it's going to rotate at the shoulder. But it gets help from the serratus here, these jagged boxer's muscles. They're going to sort of abduct the scapula, so bring the scapula away from the midline and help to bring the arms forward. It's kind of a different action, but the result very similar. So that's the synergist. Here's another prime mover, the lats, latissimus dorsi. It's kind of a swimmer's muscle for the recovery stroke of something like a butterfly. But it gets help from these synergists, the infraspinatus. This is the back of the shoulder and the teres major down below. They're going to elevate and rotate the arm to kind of help the latissimus do its job. I like to look at muscle fibers. So you can see here the trapezius, lower right. So you can just imagine when those muscles contract, they're going to pull on the scapula or shoulder blade and cause it to rotate and elevate and it works in combination with the deltoid and these muscle fibers are going to go across so you can just imagine when they shorten they're going to elevate the arm continue this muscle fiber idea look at the glutes they come at a slanting angle and so that tells you these gluteus muscles are going to rotate the leg laterally whereas the tensor fascia straight down the hip it's going to bring the leg outwards. So you can see how these muscle fibers start to tell you what's going on. Bicep femoris, one of the hamstring muscles in the back of the leg, and the semitendinosus. You can just imagine when these muscles shorten, they're going to flex the knee so that the heel comes back. It's kind of a posterior flexion. Whereas the vastus and the rectus we talked about, they're going to shorten and bring the knee up. It's kind of a flexion in a way. The words extend here, but you can imagine the knee's going to come up in a way it's going to flex it towards the hip. Range of motion, ROM. 
that is the optimal muscle angle or action that allows movement without injury. Now we need wide ROM because see the muscle is tied to the bone via a tendon. When the muscle contracts, it helps stimulate bone growth. And we found that in our studies with monkeys. Uh, you know, here's my son. We had to climb the trees in the jungles of Central America to really accurately measure the rotation and extension of monkeys. And what our work found was that um, wild monkeys have healthier bones. Here we are at a museum. They have healthier bones because they have wide range of motion and that tendon is tugging, tugging on the bone, stimulating bone growth and increasing muscle mass. Whereas the muscle, uh, monkeys in zoos uh, poor bone health and lower muscle mass. So move in big ways if you want to keep moving and want to keep being strong.